and welcome to the second session of Artificial Intelligence for the NC State Jenkins MBA program. And I am once again your host, uh, Professor William Moran, uh, and today we'll be talking about four of the more simple methods of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence that exist. And don't dismiss them because they're simple. Often some of these simple methods will already be able enough to gain you some serious insight. Um, so the methods we'll be talking about are K nearest neighbors, uh, regression and support vector machines, and naive bays, right? Um, and we'll go through each of them. Before I get to that, I've had a couple of questions about where to get data sets. And to discuss that a little bit, I want to kind of talk about the um, the a, a great data set that I really like, or a great data set site, great data competition site called Kaggle. And Kaggle has been around for quite a while, and essentially what it is, it's the place for organizations to put up data sets that they have questions about, uh, and you can go and download those data sets, and you can play around with them, and you can try and answer some of those questions. So if you're looking for a data set for your group project, right, this is a great place to find it. Um, and in this course, I'm going to use as an example a previous data set that they had up there called Allstate. But before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about what's up on Kaggle. So I'm going to switch over to the Kaggle website. Okay, so here we are on the Kaggle website. And as you can see right now, it's uh, covered with COVID-19 uh, references. That's because I'm recording this in the spring of 2020, right? And so there's a lot of data uh, about COVID-19 that you could potentially look at, right? And so if you click on one of these data sets, right, it will then give you more detail about it. So this is the COVID-19 Open Research Data Set Challenge from um, Georgetown, NIH, the White House, and others, right? Um, and it talks a little bit about specifically about what's in the data set, right? In this case, it's 47,000 scholarly articles, um, including 36,000 with full text. Uh, and they are trying to um, basically look through this data set uh, to find answers to questions about COVID. In particular, right? Um, they have the list of questions under what's called the task sections. And so here's the questions. What is known about transmission, incubation, and viral stability? How, what do we know about COVID-19 risk factors? And so forth. So this is scientific data. It's NLP uh, approaches. Natural language processing approaches would probably work the best here, right? Um, and so you can kind of explore this. And then besides the tasks for every data set, and tasks are standard. They have those all the time. Um, they also have the kernels, right? So these are little bits of code that people have already written to kind of start to look at that data. Uh, and then you'll see a discussion about that data, right? There will be activity that you can see about how many, and then the metadata, which describes the underlying data itself, right? Who owns it, who the maintainers are, things like that. And then of course you can download the data, right? This is a six gigabyte download in this case. And the notebooks allow you to start new ways of collaborating on that data, right? So that's a, a nice way to do it. Now, so that one, you know, is very much a text rich challenge, right? But others might be different, right? So we could look to see, um, here's one about US accidents, for instance, that's a countrywide traffic accident data set. And in this case, they're trying to look at like visualizing US accidents, look at the state that has the highest number of accidents, different kind of tasks you could explore with it, right? Um, and the data sets, by the way, are not part of the competition. If you want to see the competitions, you can click on compete. And these are actually competitions that are going on. So, um, for instance, you know, there's a whole bunch here right now. This one uh, looks pretty interesting. This is estimating the unit sales of Walmart retail goods. So something that might be very appropriate for the class, right? Um, and it has a description and it tells you how it's evaluated. So. Um, essentially, um, if you look, read it through, right, in this one, you're trying to predict how much units will be sold um, in uh, the USA by Walmart, right? Um, and so in particular, right, um, they're asking things like how much camping gear will one store sell each month um, and things along those lines to try and predict this, right? Um, you're going to use hierarchical sales data from Walmart. You're gonna forecast daily sales for the next 28 days, and you're gonna look at data that covers stores in three US states, right? California, Texas, and Wisconsin. Um, it includes all sorts of aspects to it. And then if you look at the evaluation section, they say that the way they evaluate it is they'll look at what the actual results were, 
and they'll look at what your predictions are, right? And they'll um, do a root mean squared error between those two, a weighted root mean squared error um, to look at it, right? Um, and this one's currently open, right? It, wa um, it will be released fully in uh, June 1st, 2020, right? And you have to enter everything by June 23rd and uh, make your predictions. Um, and then by June 30th is the final uh, submission deadline, right? Um, so that's the basic idea behind Kaggle. It's very useful. So this one is not, it's not quite open, I should say. It's going to be open shortly, but it's, a, it's an interesting competition that's coming up that might be useful, right? Um, so with that being said, right, there's a lot of interesting data sets up here. Um, one, you know, that a lot of people kind of play around with early on, and there's some great examples on Kaggle about how to play with this one is the t uh, Titanic, right? And as you say, it's a start here, predict survival on the Titanic, you get familiar with machine learning basics. So this one attempts to predict um, who will survive in uh, the Titanic disaster, right? The, after, um, so you're given a bunch of data about the people on the Titanic, and you have to predict which individuals are actually going to survive, right? And you can actually join this competition right now, right? It's kind of an always going on competition, and you can submit your, your results. Interestingly enough, and I leave this as a puzzle for you to figure out at home, right? One solution that I found that works pretty well is one that simply counts up the number of letters in a person's name and says that people with more letters in their name are more likely uh, to survive. Now, I, I, it's an interesting question. That one does work pretty well, and I'd leave it as a, if you want to play around with this data set, leave it as a question for you to examine why that works pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to pause here, I'm going to switch back, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, uh, K nearest neighbors. Before uh, we get into K nearest neighbors, I want to talk a little bit more about one particular data set that I'm going to be using throughout this course as kind of an example data set, uh, and that is the Allstate data set, and this is from a capital competition a little while ago. And basically what this data set was, and it's, um, uh, is that given the features that describe a customer, can we describe which level of insurance per per protection they will purchase? One way to think of this is if, if a consumer comes up to the Allstate website and they're kind of looking at different things, they're getting price quotes on different things, right? Can Allstate figure out which package it should actually present to them quicker, right? And the reason why you might want to do that is because the more times someone clicks, the less likely they are to actually make that purchase, right? If Allstate gives them the perfect offer right away, Right, then maybe they'll they'll purchase that right away and they don't have to worry about it, right? Whereas if Wellstate gives them an offer and they're like, nah, that's not quite what I want. I want to look at a new offer and they play around with some, you know, different filters and things like that, and they look at another offer and they're like, ah, that's not quite what I want, right? The more times they do that, the less likely they are to purchase. So um, in this data set, we have a bunch of different example data. We have number of people in the family, whether or not the person looking is a homeowner, the age of their car, the car value, the age of the oldest and youngest family members, their previous level of, of insurance, and the duration of their previous policy, among others. Um, and the dependent variable that we're going to try and predict is the level of coverage that they actually choose in the end, right? Now, in this data set, by the way, they have both purchase and non-purchase data, but for a lot of the examples I'm going to use in this class, I'm going to restrict to just the purchases, just to kind of make some of the explanations a little easier. So that's the data set I'm going to use, but I, I, I ask you to go out there, explore Kaggle a little bit, find the data set that you're interested in exploring. And you don't have to use Kaggle, I should mention that. For this class, you can use any data set you want, as long as you can describe it well and look at what's in it, right? Um, you can even go out and collect your own data on Twitter or something like that. We're going to talk a little bit about that in uh, session four. Um, so um, there's some great examples of how you could collect this data and, and explore it.